So I wanted to make Persona 5 Tactica my next video, but moments after I pressed the upload button to my video, another announcement was made by Atlas in regards to Persona 3 Reload, so instead of making a short video informing you on days old news, I've decided that I'd put together a comprehensive list of everything we know about Persona 3 Reload up until now. This video might be a bit longer than my usual videos, so make sure you get all snug and cozy, okay? Here we go. The leaked information. The trailer for Persona 3 Reload was leaked a few days before it was officially announced alongside Persona 5 Tactica, a Persona 5 spin-off in the essence of a Fire Emblem game. This is what fans expected from a crossover between Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem instead. We received TMS or Tokyo Mirage Sessions and that game flopped so I assume that's why we got Persona 5 Tactica. Anyways, back to P3 RE. Prior to the trailer leak, p3re.jp was a website that was a domain that Atlas claimed, which began speculation on the Persona 3 remake within the leaked trailer. We had confirmations on quite a few things, but first and foremost was that they wouldn't be reusing the Persona 3 dancing assets, which frankly, I'm quite glad they aren't. I mean, I'm not sure if you've seen them, but come on, look at how plasticky they look. There's been like five years since P3D dropped. They did say that they began development in 2019, so I wouldn't be surprised if beta early versions of the game use those HD models of Cease and Gekakon. We thought that they would use them to save time and, you know, reuse them, but nope, only 3D models and portraits. There's definitely been a glove for our boy Makoto Yuki. I mean, look at the original sprite from my boy and compare it to now. Before he looked like a 4chan doom scroller, now he looks like he can steal your girl and fuck up your shit. Something's to be said about how Junpei looks. In my first video, I compared him to a Wojak, but he looks really Disneyified. I don't know if I'm nitpicking though. And like, Yukari looks really, really cute. I mean, I'm, I'm really a fan of how they've changed how she looks over the years. I'm mentioning this all due to the portraits being showed on the P3RE site. Tartarus in the trailer was interesting. Off the bat, within the trailer, we see a new camera angle perspective behind Makoto. Rather than slightly above, like the one used in Portable and Fess, it's very reminiscent of Persona 5. It's also been linked that Tartarus has breakable objects and unique conversations that you'll only hear by exploring with your team, similarly to Memento in Persona 5. The protagonist has only been shown to, with his one-handed sword, mixed with flavor text at the police station where the bow says, For Yukari, it isn't confirmed whether or not due to us having party member control that we have the choice of the weapon type that the protagonist can use. My theory is that due to the party member controls matching the gameplay of Portable, they wouldn't want the protagonist to be too useful or dynamic, as you have to worry about your party too. So I imagine that they would strip that from the uh, protagonist being able to use the different weapon types. We also saw poor lighting in the western trailers, but in the Japanese trailer they showed the second block of Tartarus. The lighting in there looks far better than the later floors that they showed us. Um, since I mentioned the Japanese trailer, I might as well talk about the differences which are pretty minor, apart from the Tartarus block that they show. They accidentally show more of the school and different movement in the open areas that are different. Sheesh, I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Full moon announcements and errors I made in my last video. In my last video, I posted it about an hour before the announcement that new information would appear about the game every full moon, which is funny and fitting for Persona 3. This was pretty big, as after the Xbox showcase, we didn't really know when the next batch of information would be, or hearing about it. Some information that I got wrong in, in, my, in my two videos is that I said that both English and Japanese voice actors were being recast. This is untrue and was a rumor at the time that both were being recasted, however it's just the English team that's being recast. And Twitter did what Twitter does and made a mockery of the whole thing, the you are not a gamer copypasta was read out by the now new Makoto Yuki, it has been floating around a little more. And Something I wasn't 100% sure on was the zoom-ins on the trio of characters Makoto, Junpei, and Yukari. I was unsure as to whether or not the zoom-ins were their critical hit animations, and uh, I saw someone in the comments mention that they most likely are the critical hit attacks. I just didn't want to say that for definite. All evidence, regardless, shows that it probably is critical hit attacks. FES and FEMC. I want to address the elephant in the room, which is the additions that Persona 3 Fess and Portable 
gave. At first we were told that this game would be the vanilla experience of Persona 3. However, not much longer later due to massive backlash from the West and East. In an interview, a representative stated that the game would include changes that were introduced in FES, like the Iga social link. However, the game would not include the answer post-game epilogue to Persona 3 alongside the FEMC being absent. This meant that although we have portableisms like the message board and party member control, this hard confirmed the missing female protagonist. Atlas most likely released the rushed portable port so they could keep the FEMC absent from Reload due to the massive amount of content that they would have to make for her. For example, 3D models of Sayori, Ryo, places in Inaba, and the volleyball court alongside extended amounts of dialogue for her social links, especially since it has been confirmed that the social links will be voiced, which makes me really really hyped for how the hermit and social link will be voiced i mean will they use text-to-speech for your, or will they use your teacher's voice actor or if they get the original voice actor from maya from persona 2 for the reference I, I don't know. The possibility of DLC that includes the answer or the FEMC has been a popular fan theory among people on Twitter. I mean, if they were to do that, they could theoretically charge for two games with a FEMC DLC and an answer DLC. Personally, I think that people, when given the option to play the answer, they wouldn't. The original is a 15 hour grind fest with a lack of compendium and the character suicide of Yukari. I mean, her behavior is, is really strangely written for the answer and it's it's an excuse that people use to say that she's a shit character. Faz did two polls, uh, one on YouTube and one on Twitter. On YouTube, 43% of people said that they wanted FEMC and Reload and 57% of people said that they wanted the answer. Now, I'm not sure if this is because the answer needs some balance changes to make it less of a grind fest because having a version of the answer with party member control and a compendium may be what people want so they can experience the epilogue of the game due to it being canon. For me personally, and from what I've seen of a lot of the Persona community, they don't really care too much about the answer. It's more of a test of people's perseverance with the tactics menu than anything. There isn't anything that's major in the answer other than explanations of how some party members awoke to their Persona. And other than that, it's really just sees coming to terms with the death of Makoto and it's inconsequential if you want to play the answer you can play fast you can buy it in the US for like $30 and it's still on the PlayStation store and you can still emulate it what the trailer tells us now since the leak we've had three different trailers the Xbox one which is the one that leaked for the West which we've already seen the Japanese one showing a little more of the school in the second block of Tartarus We've also seen that the trailer is in 4K and it's coming to uh, that the game is coming to PS5 and Steam. The possibility of ray tracing is probable, and the leaks of the game's listings have shown Switch versions, but everything official that's been announced has shown no Switch version. The Overworld was shown in an interview, and so what we have confirmed is that there isn't any new areas that have opened up in the Overworld, so no new areas to spend time in like Kichi Joji and Persona 5 Royal. We do know that this version of the game is being developed by people who weren't game devs when they played Persona 3 originally, so they're going into this wanting to make a faithful remake, which makes changes and such that reflect a more modern RPG. Due to some of Persona 3's more dated aspects since Persona 3, they have made, you know, two other 3D Persona games and more SMT games and fucking Soul Hackers too. So they know what they, you know, they know what fans enjoy. And the game needs to change for the better. The game has been confirmed to have a male icon, uh, which is somewhat of a Persona 5-ism, uh, where instead of characters coming up to you during lunchtime, they'll just send you a text message and it's far less intrusive, which may help players decide who they want to hang out with and help know who is available. In the evening, there's also studying and cooking with C's, which is the way that they're worming social links in with the male party members. Not something that's as in detail, more like the mandatory events in Persona 5 where you study with the Phantom Thieves. In Persona 3, I've had many, many frustrations not knowing what social links are available on certain days. So the text message change is something I personally appreciate. I hope and pray to God that they have flip phones and phones that reflect the time of when the game was originally intended to be set in time. It's also not confirmed whether or not we get five social stats or the three that are in the original. 
They've stated that maxing out social links will be easier in this. They said that it will be a challenge, but watching Nam have to follow a guide to a T to be able to max out social links in one playthrough is really sadistic. You really have to min-max everything. Every stat boost matters, every action matters, and you really need to follow it to a so, so, so strictly. So this will be a welcome change. In regards to the protagonist being able to multi-wield weapons like in the original and Fess, with flavor text under Yukari's bow in the trailer, if this is the truth, then hammers will be such a waste of time for them to develop for Shinji just for them to eat him after a month. So it's so unfortunate if that's how they choose to do it. I don't see them finding a way to keep him alive because even in portable, they still fucking yeet my boy till the end of the game. So, you know, he doesn't even become a party member if you do save him. Some final things I'd like to mention that were translated in a Japanese article interview is that Persona 3 Reload will have the highest volume of voice dialogue in the whole series, which is really surprising considering the length of Persona 5 Royal with its third semester, but with social links being voiced, it is a high possibility. When thinking about Persona 3, I don't really think of this grandiose experience like Persona 5, but this game is being made to be played similarly to Persona 5 with the UI elements and its gameplay. I mean, it has been stated that we are making adjustments to the main cast, including their skills, so that they are all equally as effective in battle, meaning that Igus and Shinji may end up having an element. I imagine if they do try bring over Curse and Nuke, perhaps Igus will get Nuke-style skills as she's supposed to be some kind of nuclear weapon and Shinjiro's cursed to die or something. I don't know, some poetic shit, something like that. And he is an edgy boy. Furthermore, it has been said that we have to follow guidelines of the original and create a dungeon with an array of small elements that can be interacted with, and we know Tartarus will have breakable walls. Perhaps that's an, an element that will be interacted with? We know it won't be Persona 5 style palaces, thank god it isn't, I can't stand them because they suck for replayability. RNG dungeons for the win. I will say that I do like the aesthetics, but RNG dungeons are more fun to dungeon crawl in. Okay, so that is absolutely everything we know about Persona 3 Red Lotus of June 17th. I swear to god, if they leak something after this video comes out, I'll lose my mind. It's happened twice now. <sighs> Regardless, I decided to make this video due to my community polls. So if you want to take a part of those, make sure you subscribe and to stay up to date with Persona 3 Reload, your girl Jessie will always be here to report on the news. I hope that you're all hyped and I pretty promise I will be making a Tactica video. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, please leave a like. It makes me feel really happy to see all the people in the comments. I do keep my eyes on the comments, so if you do want to say hi or leave feedback or leave your opinions on what I should cover next, please comment. I see them all. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I wish you all the best.